Hi, this is Kirk Blattenberger with the AirplanesAndRockets.com website. I'm going to give a little video instruction on a, what's worked for me for producing really accurate duplicate bends in at least eighth inch music wire. I'm using a Micromark wire bending tool. It's similar to the uh, K&S tool, some other ones. It's got a quarter inch peg here and another just a quarter inch bolt here is a, something to put the wire against while you're bending and it works out real well for eighth inch music wire because this is a quarter inch diameter uh, dowel and so it gives an eighth inch radius bend which is pretty much what you like to have is the same radius as the diameter of the wire. What I'm using it on is there's a, a C47 uh, that was designed by Walter Muschiano it came from uh, 19 late 1950s vintage American modeler magazine I just had it blown up and what I needed to do is make these two identical landing gear wires as part of the for the landing gear so the way I did it I, I did a lot of uh, experimentation on how to best mark the wire so that you end up with the dimensions that you want to begin with because it, it can be highly variable depending on how you do the marking, whether or not you clamp the, the wire uh, so that it can't move as it's bending or just leave it free. I found that leaving it free is the best way to do it. So what I do is I just start with this piece of eighth inch wire. I'm going to build or bend a duplicate uh, wire landing gear to this one. Uh, the first what I did was marked out on this ruler uh, where each bend is going to be so that I can just quickly lay it on top of there and I don't have to remember individual lengths. Uh, and it's labeled according to on the plans what I measured for the different uh, areas of the bends on the plan. Now it starts out with uh, the first one which I have labeled as A. So I'll just put it up against there, do a mark on there doing it all the way around doesn't matter so much on this first bend but on the subsequent ones it, it would be nice to have it all right and what I do is I found that I leave this end loose it's got a this screw that you can tighten down on the wire if you want to so that it can't slide along as it goes around the bend but I've actually found that it works better to go ahead and leave it loose and what I do is I take my mark, here I'll show it from this side, and I found that if you put the mark right at the center line of the peg, uh, tangent to the edge there, and you start your bend at that point, I'll go ahead and do the 90 degrees here, and you probably can't see from, okay, and then bend it all the way to the 90 degrees. You usually have to go beyond your, the 90 degrees and then just let it flex back some. All right, so there's a pretty good 90 degree bend. So now I'll come over here and mark the next bend, which is B on here. So I put it all the way at the very edge of this, this piece and I mark the actual desired length on here. Don't have not trying to compensate for bends or anything at this point. I'm just marking the actual length of that portion of the wire, what its what its final length needs to be. And then since this is the end here, you couldn't really see on the first bend, but you'll be able to see on this one how as this bends, this piece actually walks in this direction because it gets pulled around that uh, dowel there instead of if I had clamped this down this would stay fixed and this this would just bend around but I found that for getting accurate lengths it's easy it's better to let that move on there so what I'll do is this this bend if this is the inside this needs to bend back this way now so that it goes horizontal on the mounting platform so since it needs to go in this direction, this time it'll set up on this side. And not only if you can get the camera there, I don't know if you can see the where the mark is. That's good enough. 
um, I'm going to put it right on the right on the center line of the dowel again, and just keep this perpendicular. If if it ends up not being perfect, you can always tweak it later with a pair of pliers just to get it bent to the exact angle. All right. So again, I'll just double check and make sure that going through the center line of the dowel, that it, that line is perfectly lined up with the center line, and then go ahead and bend this angle do another 90 degrees again a little bit past the 90 degree point you can always bend it back you can see that that came out a little bit more than 90 so I'll bend it back a little bit and you can see where now that line that started out at the set what would have been the center line of the radius is now on the outside there because this whole thing slid forward and if I lay this up against this ruler, you'll see that that comes out exact where this edge is right up against my reference line, the datum, and this is right on the outside of that B. So that turned out just like I planned. And then the next, the next line is a C. So I'll put this right up against that datum reference line. Mark the C here, get all the way around so I can always see it. All right, now this line here has to bend in like this because the landing gear, you can see what it's doing here. So now this one has to bend in this direction. So this time I'm going to start it over on this side and always put the, the, the length that has already been bent on the screw, not on the dowel, because otherwise you'll start shifting the lengths from the opposite direction and it won't add up the way it's supposed to. So again, I'm going to check to make sure that this, that reference line is right at the center line of the dowel. I'm going to check that this is roughly perpendicular. Again, any minor variations can be fixed with the pliers later. Okay, bending it a little bit past 90 so it'll flex back. And there's that one. And we'll check the length on this one. And this is the C, so there's the outside edge there, and it lines right up with the C. Next one is my D length. Right there. And this is all the easy part because this isn't having to be precise enough to match a side that's already been bent. The tricky part comes on the bends after this one. That's where the accuracy really comes in. Right, now this one, it has to bend back on itself so that it's parallel to this section. So again, I'm going to line up this center line through the center of the dowel. Check the alignment on this to make sure that it's close anyway. Go ahead, bend again, a little past 90, because it's going to spring back a little bit. Okay, now we have that. And right, now we need to go back to another C length. Make sure these are parallel. All right. Here's the next C. All right. And then this one has to bend back in the same direction as this leg. So we'll line up the reference line again in the center of that dowel. Things perpendicular as 
possible. Bend it again. This time I can look down on top of this leg to see if it's parallel to it as I go. Okay, there's, there's that one. You can tell that it's pretty darn close. And then the B length again. And if this doesn't work out right, I will never post the video, so you'll never know. All right, final bend here. And it's going to bend right towards this one. So once again, line it up on the center of the dowel. And I'm going to tilt this up a little bit so this piece of wire can go underneath that one. It will get cut off so that the two will meet in the center once I'm finished. But for now, it's going to just go underneath. make all the adjustments on here like right now you can see maybe that these are these are not parallel and this one actually sticks up above this side a little bit and that's why these two aren't exactly meeting right now let me put a little bit more of a bend in there there we go Okay. All right. So there's the there's the initial results right there. Again, it, it's not perfectly the same length there, but that's because there's a skew between these two sides. Now I'm going to stop the filming for now. I'm going to use the pliers to bend everything uh, perpendicular and parallel to each other, and I'll cut this piece off here so that it ends up with the gap like this one, and then we'll compare the two. You know, there's a there's a quick comparison with the first one that I did, so you can see how close they are. So we'll turn it off now, I'll make all the adjustments and then come back. <clears throat> okay, I've just adjusted all of the bends to make sure that they're perpendicular and parallel as they're supposed to be. Uh, this is going to end up, I'm going to be cutting this piece here back a little bit, and I'm going to be cutting these two pieces back a little bit too, because I have to be able to insert a piece of brass tubing in there to go in between so this gets spread out, it gets spread apart and the wheel goes in there later on. Uh, but anyway, this was my first one. This is the second one that I bent using the exact same method. As you can see, they match up about as perfectly as you could hope for for something like that. Uh, you know, there's still a little bit of places where they're not exactly perpendicular and parallel, but That'll all come out later when I do it 100%. But, again, for a, a method that works out in a very repeatable method for getting two of the same thing with this kind of a complex bend where you have to make the two sides come out as close to exact to each other as possible, that worked out really well. So, just remember the idea is to mark for the outside lengths what the finished length needs to be on there. Like in that case there's the the B dimension and you saw how we marked it and set it up on the center of the uh, peg for the bend and when all's said and done it comes out exact. There's the C length there. There's the D length. You know they, they come out pretty darn close to exact. Um, anyway, the reason I did this is because before I started, I looked on the internet to see if I could find some sort of a video where somebody demonstrated a good, precise, repeatable way of getting these sort of bends, and I couldn't find anything. That doesn't mean it's not out there. I just couldn't find it. Uh, and, uh, thanks for watching.